There's no one way to describe or define what this place is to the people who have gathered behind its doors for 132 years. To some, it's relaxation. To others, it's a place to either escape to or finish your day or your week with. Many have come for the billiards, and to be sure, many have come for the burgers. Many have come for a cold brew, but they also come because it's just comfortable. It's authentic. It feels real in a way that seems harder to find as the years roll by. Whether a curious patron began stopping by in the 40s or the 60s or the 90s, the 1890s or the 1990s, after a handful of visits, it was a place where everybody knew your name. It was Paul Booch Venable's first business. It was 1884 and Paul was 18. It began as a proper gentleman's billiards hall. No alcohol, no room for vulgarity, gambling, or women. Tobacco, however, was not only tolerated, but enthusiastically marketed. With some help from his father, Booch opened his four-table billiards hall at 119 West Broadway. It would be the first of six different locations. In 1895, he moved it three doors down from the southwest corner of 10th and Broadway, and in 1902 to the northeast corner of 10th and Broadway, and then in 1908 back to the southwest corner, but this time on the corner. In 1911, he moved the hall to what he probably thought would be his best and last location, the second floor of the brand new Virginia building. Today, the second floor of the former Strollway and now Atkins City Center is home to the Smith Lewis Law Firm. But even this new home, which included a barbershop inside the hall, would not be the last patch of downtown Columbia to call Booch's home. It was, however, the last place that Paul Booch Venable would know about. Booch died unexpectedly in 1912, following an operation for gallstones in a St. Louis hospital. Both the Missourian and the Tribune ran front page obituaries that celebrated Booch's generosity. Known as the student's friend, he always had some money to loan his customers when they were in need. And from the beginning in 1884 and beyond Booch's death and through World War II, Booch's was primarily a student hangout. New owners kept up the high class ambiance of the pool hall before and after its move to its present location at 110 South 9th Street in about 1928. But the repeal of prohibition in the 30s and the return of GIs in the mid 40s changed the feel of Booch's. Beer was available at the bar now and older locals started to mix in with the students, giving the place the feel of a neighborhood bar. I came here for the first time in 1954 with my father. My father worked down the street at a tire store and we came here for lunch and I've been coming here ever since. The years rolled by and in 1957 when new owner Ed Barnhart took over, African Americans were allowed in as customers and not just as employees. Women, however, were still not welcome and wouldn't be until the 70s. After two more ownership changes, Jerry Dethrow, Robert Rappold, and Mick Jabor buy Booch's in 1976. This photo celebrates the threesome at the end of their first night as proprietors of what was already a Columbia institution. The term photobombing hadn't yet come into existence, yet it's worth noting that one patron wasn't aware of the historical moment taking place when the shutter snapped, perhaps too engrossed in his rail shot. While they introduced liquor by the drink for the first time in 1982, Death Row and Jabor did a lot to maintain the history and the authentic feel of the hall. Then and now, six of the original 22 tables purchased in 1914 are still available to all comers. But there was change. The burgers began winning national recognition and women were finally welcome. Photography and video was still politely frowned upon, but in 1984, one woman in particular, armed with a camera and a young male relative, got death row's attention. So an older lady and a young guy taking pictures. So I walked back and, and said, uh, sorry, we have a no photo policy. And the guy looks at me and says, I think you'll make an exception in this case. This is Butch's daughter. She was 85 years old, and I think it was about the first time, and she was a J school graduate. She hadn't been back to Columbia in something like 50 years. The story on Booch's nickname, this is according to my mother, Booch's wife, who is not known to be loose of tongue. Says, Booch was sitting on a wall by the university 
I think it was 1871, I can find it somewhere. The poet Eugene Field, a children's poet, walks up to him sitting on the wall and says, what's your name, little boy? And he says, Paul Blucher Venable. And the poet says, that's no nickname for a little boy. You're from now on you're to be called Booch. In 2004, Death Row and Jabor turned Booch's over to its present owners, Charlie Curry and Rick Robertson. Charlie and Rick have continued all of the traditions and Booch's is still the place to find a great burger, a cold brew, a good game of stick, and experience with all of your senses the legacy of Paul Booch Venable and the tens of thousands of students and neighbors who have passed through its doors, except on Sundays. Please welcome into the Boone County Hall of Fame, Booches.